How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you never before experienced by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies Show. Now, here is your host of Big Fat Lies, success sorceress, and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Hello, happy Monday, happy fun day. Today, we are talking about manifestors in human design, the manifestor energy type. So if you are a manifestor, if you love a manifestor, if you are a parent of a manifestor, if you're a manifestor parent, today, we're going to talk about nourishing your unique energy type and how to activate self-care that actually works for you instead of running around doing all the manifesting and yeah, being a slave to your reality. So today we're just going to let it rip. <laughs> whatever comes out of my face is going to be whatever comes out of my face. This show is called Big Fat Lies because I have noticed my entire life, all of the big fat lies that people tell themselves that stop them from being so happy, so healthy, so wealthy, so switched on and so loved in this lifetime. And I really believe that you are here to be deeply loved, deeply appreciated. So if you're not feeling all that appreciated, you might want to sit down, you might want to enjoy yourself, you might want to just like grab a mocktail, grab a cocktail. It's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon on the Pacific Coast, and it's probably later than that, wherever you are tuning in. So if you're tuning in on the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please subscribe on any platform that you happen to find this show on. And also let me know like what topics are of value to you. What would you like to know? What what did this show do for you? I know you're just listening. You may be a regular listener to this show, and that would be helpful to know whether or not you are a regular listener. So on this show, we just let it flow and see what happens. Today, we have a masterclass, and I'm going to share with you the real secrets of nourishing yourself as a human design manifester from setting boundaries and saying no to decision fatigue, to surrounding yourself with clean energy and staying connected to your mission. Today, you're going to discover the keys to maximum self-care and success in your business, in your life as a human design manifester. So today, we're also going to talk about the misconceptions of self-care and what it really means for manifestors, saying no to what doesn't serve you and yes to what does, setting boundaries to avoid decision fatigue, and oh my goodness, decision fatigue is a real thing, surrounding yourself with clean energy to thrive. So if that sounds good, please stay tuned. If it sounds too weird, that's fine. I'm sure there's a thousand other things that you could be doing right now rather than sitting watching this masterclass. Right now, we are live on Facebook. Highly recommend that you hop on over to the Inspired Choices Network chat room and then also join us live right now if you are a manifestor energy type because you do have the ability to type in the chat, have any questions that you have answered during the broadcast. And I super love it. Uh, last time I did a class for boundaries and manifestors, I actually had a manifestor join live and that was super juicy to get to encounter that manifestor energy type and really add it to her life. And I would say, this is what I freaking love about manifestors. What I love about manifestors is probably some of the things that is very, very difficult for them to navigate. They care deeply. The manifestors that I know, the manifestor clients that I've had, and then also my own son, my second son is a manifestor energy type. 
And so when things don't go right for them, instead of, you know, being like a dragon and like burning down an entire village, they actually go within and, um, which is very difficult to watch. So they go within, uh, their, their methods of self-correction are legendary, legendary, and, and they're not kind. It's not self-care. Their self-correction methods from what I've seen, what I've experienced are things that really, really need to change. And so if you are like legendary in your ability to, you know, beat the, you know, what out of yourself to make sure that you succeed. Um, I don't know that that is what I would recommend. You know, when I work with manifestors, what I do notice is that when we can start to correct the way they correct themselves, things can really start to change. And so today, what did I promise you? I promised you that we were going to talk about self-care and the misconceptions of self-care and what it really means for you manifestors. Also, we're going to talk about saying no and what doesn't serve you and yes to what does, setting boundaries to avoid decision fatigue and surrounding yourself with clean energy to thrive. So, but before that, I want to talk about the manifestor aura. So the manifestor aura is a self-contained aura and the aura pushes the energy away from them. So it's a repelling aura that pushes people, places, and things away from them. And the reason why it's there is because manifestors are here to manifest. And so if there's people, places, and things that keep sort of dropping themselves in front of manifestors so that they get distracted and they aren't able to stay and flow with what it is that they are planning on doing, or maybe what it is that comes in for their viewpoint so that they can consider what it is that they're here to do, that repelling aura will push the people, places, and things away that aren't correct for them. But imagine, <laughs> imagine being a manifester and saying to yourself, oh, well, I think I'm just going to go and work here. And having that thing that you think that you're going to do for a living, just for example, say you're like, okay, I really like kitties and puppies. I think I want to just go work at the pet store. I think I just want to go work at the pet store because I love kitties and puppies. So you have this manifesting energy, this manifestor energy, and it keeps pushing away the people, places, and things that aren't correct for you. But you think that you get to choose to work at the pet store because you love kitties and puppies. <laughs> oh, so freaking hard. So I just really want to start out this show with just a big, yeah, just like a big hug for manifestors. Like if you've had difficulty in your life navigating this aura, like if nobody's talked to you about your aura type, then let you know that the people, places, and things that your aura is pushing out of your way pushing out of your world, like no matter how much you love the people, no matter how much you love the places, no matter how much you love the things, your aura is going to take care of you. And so if the people, places, and things aren't the correct people, places, and things, then you will find out as those people are ejected, those places are ejected, and those things are ejected out of your life. So what do I recommend that you do when you notice that these things are happening? Well, one, I highly recommend that you have a mentor. Highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be me. I'm not that inexpensive to work with. However, when you do manage this aura and manage your expectations of your own aura, magic happens like magic when you're like wow I didn't 
get the job at the pet store or I had the job at the pet store for six weeks and then something weird happened and then I didn't have the job at the pet store. So if you don't have an expectation of yourself other than the universe is going to take care of me and I'm going to start to notice the patterns, you know, we talk a ton on this show about data, start to notice the patterns in your life, like how easy is it for you to attract this type of person and how hard is it for you to attract other people or you know, those other people who aren't your correct people. Like maybe they talk about you. Maybe they, I don't know, do something that makes you feel super uncomfortable. And then you're like, well, I'm taking my aura out of here. So thinking about that for yourself, manifestors, the data is going to be very, very important. And if you're not a data-driven person, I highly recommend that you start to become one. And so how do you collect data? Well, journaling, like daily journaling, really, really important. Like, how did your day go? What did you enjoy about your day? What didn't you enjoy about your day? What was the weather like? What was the moon phase like? You know, like manifestors have huge openness in their bodies. So in most cases, they have a ton of energy centers that are open. And so those open energy centers can be places that they have to learn to navigate. Just for example, if you have an open ego, then learning to navigate not proving. Or if you have an open third eye, learning to navigate not being certain. Or, you know, like if people are looking for certainty from someone that has an open third eye, that person can't provide certainty. And so thinking about those open energy centers, they all have different messaging. And so when you look at your human design chart, if you see all of those open centers, one, they have messaging. So you as a business owner, you as a being, if you're going to be creating things for people's consumption, then knowing what those open energy centers are and what the themes of the open energy centers are very, very important. Because as we know in human design, or maybe you've just discovered this, there is a ton of what is called not self. So not self is everything that you're not supposed to be, not supposed to be certain about, not supposed to be proving, like just whatever. All of those open centers will have a different theme. And so I may do a show on open centers and the themes. Uh, however, there's a ton of information on the internet about the open centers and the themes. So it might not even be that I need to create that for you. Maybe I need to create the invitation for you to check out that information. And then if you want to know more, you might want to book in a session and talk to me about your chart and start to navigate that openness in your chart. And so what happens with manifestors is they get angry, so freaking angry. And so if you are an angry manifester, oh my goodness, I have nothing but love in my heart for you. It's really, really difficult to have that much anger. And so probably the best way to frame it the best way to frame it is that you are like a little steam locomotive and there's just so much coal in your belly, so much fire in your belly. You know that you're here to do something. You're here to manifest something. You're here to create something that's never been created on this planet before. And so if you keep getting stopped, you keep getting distracted, you keep getting, you know, discontent, and it's just building this fire inside your belly, then that's, that's true. You do have a fire inside your belly. And it's also true that you're here to create something that's never been here or create a solution that's different than the other solutions that people are creating. And so if you keep getting stopped by life, then what can happen is you can get super, super angry. And so the people around you might be trying to shush you, trying to like calm you down. And, you know, as we know, nobody ever relaxed from being told to relax. 
<laughs> you're not really here to relax anyways. What you're here to do is to manifest. And then when you get to manifest, you're going to get to experience this deep well of inner peace. Doesn't that sound so gorgeous? So after the break, we're going to talk about this deep well of inner peace and how self-care and nourishing yourself as a manifester can help you access this. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. We are on the Inspired Choices Network, and this show is called Big Fat Lies. Join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, you guys, welcome back. So today we are talking about the human design manifester. That's 7% of the population of the earth. And I just finished talking about the manifester aura. And so if you're just joining us, highly recommend that you as a manifester really start to navigate your own aura. <laughs> Because it's a wild ride. It's going to push away the people, the places, and the things that are not congruent to you having the best life, the most manifestory life possible. And so you may have seen this happen in your life. You may have had jobs that let you go, people that let you go, places that you just had to leave. And that is your aura that's creating that for you and co-creating it with you. Now, do you have choice? Absolutely. But I highly recommend as a manifester that you don't try to hold on to the people, places, and things that are being ejected out of your life. <laughs> However, as you begin to navigate your aura and begin to learn about being a manifester and begin to invite in this deep abiding peace that's available and start to bleed out the manifester rage that can come in from not being able to have, yeah, what do I want to say? Not being able to have the life that you know is possible for you. So what can happen is when you least expect it as a manifester, somebody can come in to assist you with navigating your life, navigating your business. Now, I have a client, uh, just trying to think, I don't think she's 10 years younger than me. But anyway, she's so freaking accomplished, so freaking accomplished. And kind of like, she's a wild ride, you know, like this, um, 
remember the big catch or deadliest ocean or anyways, like these big deep sea fishing vessels need uh, an environmental consultant. And so she was the environmental consultant on these deep sea vessels and gorgeous lady and not one bit afraid. She's just like, whatever, I'm the only chick on this boat and you know, nothing bad's going to happen to me because I will chop people's block off. And she's just incredible. She's absolutely incredible. And so I met her through a completely different venue. Like I was owning a bed and breakfast, which was also, you know, a destination for weddings and ended up meeting her through that. And then we started talking about her business and some stuff that was going on. And I let her know that I was doing some consulting and we ended up working together. And I would say for me, it was so great to work with this person. And, you know, the things that we ended up working on were so out of the box you know, we ended up, oh gosh, so many amazing things happened over the course of working together. And one of the things that she did learn was how great she was at setting up systems and how great she was at setting up businesses. And so her own business, her environmental consulting firm that she owns, we ended up setting up great standard operating procedures for that business, for operations, for human resources, like a whole bunch of different things we set up together. And then, you know, eventually she may license those systems to other environmental consulting firms. It was definitely something that um, was apparent to me that she does have the ability to not only generate one business she has the ability to manifest business after business after business and so once we got all of that stuff done for her main business then she opened a lifestyle business where she creates these like uh what do I want to call them like nutraceuticals like with um collagen and uh ashwagandha and um uh, beneficial mushrooms, adaptogens, like all of that. She started creating a business because she was making these like special coffees for her friends. And, you know, as you know, that type of thing, those nutraceuticals can actually taste really disgusting, even, even if they're great uh, for you, they aren't necessarily very appetizingly tasty for you. And she had a, an ability of like a Zen ability of making those things taste so good. And so this person at the beginning of working together really was just so upset. She was like, had that high level manifestor rage, but it was turned inward. And so she was deeply, deeply sad. So it wasn't manifesting with her like yelling at people and burning down villages and ramming into people with her car. It was turned inward. And so she was deeply sad, deeply dissatisfied, crying a ton. And, you know, it was just really, 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 really not good for her. It was not good for the people around her. And it was definitely not good for her business. And so when we started to unwrap that and started to tap that rage and use it for power instead of, uh, you know, like reverse self-care, <laughs> it changed everything. It just changed everything. And so thinking about that for yourself, like this is the misconception of self-care is that it's you know, oh, I need to have the right shampoo. I need to have the right lotion. I need to go for massages a couple of times a month. I need to go to, for the chiropractor. No, self-care for a manifester is noticing when your internal rage spiral is ripping you apart at the core. And I've seen it over and over with manifestors. They, instead of being angry about the people, places, and things around them, they tend to be angry about their own navigation of their own world. And so correct self-care, one, is noticing when you're ripping the shit out of yourself. <laughs> it's so noticeable, but it won't be noticeable for you. 
it'll be noticeable for the people around you that you're ripping the shit out of yourself. And so I'm here to tell you, I've noticed that manifestors tend to rip themselves to shreds and you don't have to be that person anymore. To succeed in your world, you do not have to rip yourself to shreds. I'm going to say it again. To succeed in your world, manifestors, you do not have to rip yourself to shreds. There are lots of things that you can do. You can keep data. You can do journaling. You can check the moon phases and notice, mm, okay, maybe I don't need to do this thing when I'm ovulating. Maybe I don't need to do this thing when I'm having my menses. Like just really notice, manifestors, what are the correct parts of the month for you to be outwardly focused and what are the correct parts of the month for you to be inwardly focused and what is self-care for manifestors well I would say that knowing that a female body tends to operate on a 28 to 30 day cycle so trying to jam yourself into a nine to five Monday to Friday cycle is not going to work for you female manifestors male manifestors sure but you can also keep data. There might you may be as a male manifester more um, attached to the moon cycle than you would like to be. You may be more attached to the planetary cycles than you would like to be. Like right now, when I'm recording this show, I'm noticing that Mercury retrograde is messing with my uh, electronics. And so I can't pretend that that hasn't happened. I can't pretend that that doesn't work. Um, I just need to be aware of it. And so what do you need to be aware of for your own self manifestors? Well, maybe you just don't know. Maybe when you least expect it, you will have a conversation with somebody like me and it will start to open your eyes to the big fat lies of self-care because there are so many, there are so many. And the other thing that I really, really notice about self-care is what one person says is self-care is definitely not going to be what you experience self-care as. So notice that for yourself. Like if somebody thinks self-care is like backpacking in the mountains, carrying a 70 pound pack, <laughs> you know who I'm talking to. Uh, that might not be true for you. You know, you backpacking in the mountains, carrying a 70 pound pack sounds like hell to me. <laughs> but there are people who find that deeply zen, deeply, deeply comforting to just go off the grid, be nowhere near a flush toilet. <laughs> so thinking about that for yourself, what is deeply caring to you? And, you know, like maybe you could be audacious about what is deeply caring to you. Maybe you could write 21 things or 28 things or 30 things that are deeply caring to you as a manifester. And so when you start to write things down, manifestors, then you can start to pull them into your world start to program your aura to locate you to those people places and things that can bring you that deep self-care can advocate for self-care and who are not one bit afraid of your manifestor rage I'm not afraid of rage I, I find rage really kind of exciting I'm like okay good this little locomotive has fire in her belly. And that's what I find deeply, deeply uh, exciting is when people have fire in their belly. I will go toe to toe with you, absolutely advocating for you to have the life that you say that you would like to have. And the life that my intuition tells me that you are more than capable of having. I will go toe to toe with you. I'm not one bit afraid of your rage. <laughs> not one bit afraid of it. 
So after the break, we're going to talk about what it's like to go toe to toe with a manifester. So if you love a manifester and you're thinking about going toe to toe with them, you might want to listen to what I have to say after the break. This show is called Big Fat Lies. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Please join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. Do you want to know what the biggest fattest lie is in the whole world? Jennifer Kramer Lewis has discovered after working with hundreds of conscious heart-centered entrepreneurs that they believe in the lie that if you work harder, smarter, and faster than everyone else, only then will you be rewarded with success. Jennifer audaciously stakes claim that what is pleasurable for you will always be your direct route to the big bucks. Jennifer knows working this hard is robbing you of your dream life. What would you say if she gave you the keys to the Ferrari called your correct energy? What would change if you had a burnout proof business plan, a juicy switched on energy field calibrated by correct business practices, as well as Jennifer's success sorcery, deep psychic awareness and support. The investment for this process is one six what Jennifer's VIP level clients pay. Why? Jennifer believes that once you have this information, you become limitless. And that's exactly what this planet needs more of. Choose your limitless life and business at 888.jenniferkramerlewis.com. That's 888.jenniferkramerlewis.com. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jenniferkramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, you guys, welcome back. Happy Monday. Today we are talking about manifestors. So if you are just joining the live broadcast, I'm going to invite you to jump into the inspiredchoicesnetwork.com chat room. Join us in the live studio audience. And if you're on the replay, yeah, subscribe. Reach out to me. Let me know what you liked about this broadcast, what you have questions about, any other topics about self-care or whatever it is that you are facing right now. I tend to use human design and gene keys right now just because I love it. But I'm also an autodidact. I have studied under masters, masters for a very long time. I started into my self-development and consciousness journey very, very early. And I've also been a lifelong psychic and intuitive, like very lifelong. And I was luckily, I grew up in a faith where receiving messages from spirit was normal and encouraged. And so it was never, you know, there's so many psychics and intuitives that, you know, were told that they had a big imagination or it must have been their ego or something that was bringing this information up. And I never really had that done to me. It was just sort of normal that I could receive messages. And so thinking about that for yourself, what if you already know what it is that you are here to manifest? And what if saying no and what if saying yes are the two things that you really need to know how to receive the information on? And I would say that that's probably one of the things that's more difficult for a manifester to know what to say no to and what to say yes to. 
And then also when we think about the manifestor strategy, the strategy is something called informing. And so you're supposed to tell people <laughs> what it is that you're going to do. You're just like, okay, I'm going to the store. You're not asking for permission. You're just telling people, okay, I'm going to the store. And it should have pretty much no worry. Like you're not saying, hey guys, is it okay if I take the car and go to the store and I'm going to be gone 10 minutes and does anybody need anything and, and, and. No, you're not actually asking for permission. You're just informing. And so that was another thing that was very, very interesting for me to coach my own son uh, and let him know, okay, well, now you're semi-adult and you just need to inform us what it is that you're going to be doing. And I will make sure that I do not treat you like you are asking me for permission. And I will make sure that the other people in the house uh, don't get to have feedback on what it is that you're doing. And so in this world, especially female bodies are very, very um, conditioned to be people pleasers and also very conditioned to make sure that the community is okay with what it is that they're choosing. So does that feel true for you, manifestors, that you have been programmed to be a people pleaser and to just check and check and check and see whether or not the people around you approve of what it is that you're doing next? Because I'll tell you what, you're not here to do that, you guys. You're not here to do that. You're here to tell us what we should be doing. <laughs> but that's like stage four, I think. That's about stage four. But stage one or two is stopping people pleasing, stop stopping manifesting for other people, stopping like pulling abundance and wealth and health and happiness and joy and ecstasy, like all of the gorgeous things that you've been manifesting for other people into their lives. I see that. And doing it for you because it's freaking fun. <laughs> Because it gives you a deep sense of abiding peace to, you know, have what it is that you came here to have, to do what it is that you came here to do, to be what you came here to be. And if you don't know what that is, then it's really, really difficult to have peace, like really, really difficult. And so knowing what to say yes to and what to say no to as a manifester, super freaking important. And so I can feel you. You're like, well, Jennifer, what should I say yes to? <laughs> what should I say no to? Well, that is going to depend on your chart. There's a ton of information in your chart about what frequencies that you came here to be and do. So you hear this over and over, the number one frequency that you came here to be and do is your personality sun. So that's the very top number on the black side of your chart. And so wherever you are, what I'm going to invite you to do is to connect with me on Instagram. So to add me as a contact on Instagram and then send me that number. Uh, or yeah, send me that number on Instagram. And uh, if you don't hear back from me, I probably just haven't checked my messages because if you if I haven't added you back as a content, um, then you're going to end up in my spam. But I will check my spam and send me that number because I do have a resource for you of where to look so that you can know what the archetype is. And so when you start to know what the archetype is, then you can start to embody that archetype. And the more you embody the archetype, the more self-care and like what to say yes to and what to say no to will be very, very obvious to you. 
And so the archetype for me, my personality son is gate 46. So the archetype is something called the sensual. And so it's me navigating my world through my body. Like what smells good? What tastes good? What feels good? Like what turns me on? What's ecstatic for me? What's delightful for me and my body? And so I would say, I didn't have that for so long. So long, I did not have a connection with my body. And I spent, I'm just trying to think, when I was teaching myself to know what was a no for me and what was a yes for me, I think I spent a whole entire year energy testing no and yes and knowing what my body did when I was being told no and what my body did when I was being told yes. And so we all know hindsight is 2020. And so if I knew something was a no for me and I just did it anyways, of course, I got that data, that feedback of overriding my own awareness. And I would say in my own body, every time I've ever overrode my own awareness, I get so sick because I'm so sensitive. I'm so sensitive. And so for manifestors, when they override their own awareness and they go ahead and do something anyways, because they're like people pleasing or whatever the heck it is that they're doing, then what happens is that rage comes. It's like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have done that. And then it turns into self-punishment. It turns into this just ripping yourself to shreds. And I would highly recommend that when you notice yourself ripping yourself to shreds, we need to start to put in new operating systems for you. Like really giving yourself permission to start over and over and over again. Like you're not going to learn what a yes or a no feels like to you unless you're willing to spend an entire year learning what a yes or a no feels like to you because you're not a sacral being you don't have that uh uh-huh and uh uh-uh that generators do it's going to be something completely different because manifestors are not generators they're manifestors and so depending on what type then what I can do is in a one-to-one session or mentorship like whatever you decide to do we can start to teach you how to navigate your yeses and your nos. And so the minute you start to understand what your yeses and your nos are, then you're just going to know them. And then regardless, you're going to have to follow that. So if it's a yes and the people around you are like, well, oh, don't do that. You need to be able to know for yourself and set boundaries that when it's a yes for you, you're just going to freaking do it. And you're never asking people for permission. You're just informing them in the kindest, clearest, most boundaried way. (laughs) So if you don't know how to set boundaries, I'm going to send you to a different show. uh, So you can go on to my archives. So if you go to Jennifer uh, Linktree, forward slash Jennifer Kramer Lewis, Kramer with a C L E W I S. Uh, Then you can go into my archives and find that boundaries show for manifestors, because I think it's super, super important as a manifestor to know how to set boundaries and to keep boundaries. And especially that you are not asking for permission from anybody. You're just not, you're moving your way through your world Checking to see if it's a no for you, checking to see if it's a yes for you in a way that works, that you can understand. And if you need mentorship with that, then definitely get correct mentorship with that. If it seems like I'm the person that's the person who can help you with that, then great. I would love to work with you. And that could be something you could say, okay, well, my limitless process for this month is learning from Jennifer or with Jennifer, what a yes feels like, what a no feels like. Super, super valuable. You know, think about how much money that you could be making if you were in a career that actually was a solid yes for you. How much money you're leaving on the table by not working in a career that's solid yes for you. 
and you know how much anxiety and and just bullshit by doing stuff that are definite no's for you yeah oh my goodness so we are three quarters the way through this show and I still have a whole bunch more to share with you my name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis this is the big fat lies show please join me after the break have you ever said to yourself I knew I shouldn't do that how did that feel what did you make that mean about you Success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies, Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners like you from being the bright shining beacons that you came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. And we are back today. Oh my goodness, we're talking to manifestors. And before we get on with the rest of the program, I want to talk to you about decision fatigue in the rest of the program. And I also want to talk to you about surrounding yourself with clean energy to thrive manifestors. I want to invite you every Monday at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, four o'clock Mountain, five o'clock Central, six o'clock Eastern. We will be going live on the Big Fat Live show every week that I am available. The content is all about the Big Fat Lies that are stopping you from being so happy, so healthy, so wealthy, and so loved and switched on in your life. So if you're not feeling loved and switched on in your life, if it is time to be more alive than dead... <laughs> Oh my goodness, I highly recommend that you set your clocks for three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Next week's show is called How to Forgive and Not Forget. And the reason why I want you to not forget is because if you forget, you forgive and forget and forgive and forget and forgive and forget. What can happen is you can be abused by people. You can be abused by your life and completely misused and miss out on your manifestor ability, on your generator ability, on your projector ability, on your reflector ability. Highly recommend that you tune into next week's show called How to Forgive and Not Forget to find out more about that. So what do I want to leave you with? What I want to leave you with is I want to talk about decision fatigue. So I don't know if you guys know about decision fatigue. So I think there's a certain number. Let's say you can make, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to make this up. Say you can make 50 decisions before noon. <laughs> So once you get to your 50 decisions, then you're into decision fatigue. And so after that, it becomes confusing. You're like, I don't know. What do you want to eat for lunch? I don't know. What do you think I should wear? I don't know. What do you think I should do? But here's the thing. You are a manifester energy type. And so you are here to direct traffic. 
you are not here to find out, you know, some sort of bullshit consensus on where we should go for lunch. You know, if you want Thai food, that's where everybody's going. If we're in a group situation, you are the one who's going to be directing traffic as the influencer that you came here to be and do and accomplish and experience. Like you're just here. You're here to do that, manifestors. You're not here to people, please. So what is decision fatigue? So just for example, there's 50 choices that we can make from the time that we wake up till noon. I'm sure there's like dozens and dozens and dozens more. But just for example, for manifestors, what I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend is that you have a routine highly recommend a routine. So if there's five days in the week, I highly recommend that your primary decision-making process is pretty much set. So you've already meal prepped. You already know what you're eating Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so it's all set out. Those decisions are already made for you by you. So you're already informing yourself what your choices are. So highly recommend meal prep. Highly, highly recommend meal prep. Highly recommend, um, I don't know if you know about this, but there's something called a capsule wardrobe. So if you go on to Pinterest, you can uh, look up capsule wardrobes. And so just for example, say you love the color pink like I do I love pink and so I buy a lot of pink and so I tend to pick like cool tone pinks um and you know like pinks that have like gray in them or or blue in them and so they all go with one another and so my my wardrobe is already pretty much chosen for me like I can you know grab a bottom and grab a top and all the bottoms and all the tops go together and so basically all I'm worried about is like okay is it a cool weather day am I going to need a coat to wear over top of this or I'm am I going to need a hat you know that kind of thing so decision fatigue capsule wardrobe absolutely and then the next level on decision fatigue is how you navigate your primary relationships with people. Because as a manifester, learning to inform and just let people know what your choices are instead of inviting them into some sort of a, a decision-making process with you, that's the more difficult part, you guys, especially if you have someone who's used to being a dominant role in your life and like helping you make choices or or even being the person who makes the choices. And yet you're here to be the person who makes the choices and informs people what the choices are for you and then sets correct boundaries and is willing to go through with the boundary setting process and the boundary enforcing process. And so that's what people generally come to me for, is they're completely burnt out in their life. They need to have a new boundary setting process. And the best way for them to understand that they need to have that is that their life's not working. They're not happy. They may be spiraling. They may have deep internal rage. You know, they may be crying a lot. They may be sleeping a lot. They may be coming to the point of, you know, not wanting to be in the relationships with the beautiful people that want to be in relationship with them because it's very, very difficult for them to navigate this informing process. And so thinking about you manifestors, oh my goodness, I freaking adore you. You are here for something very, very special, very, very special. So I'm going to repeat that invitation to you. Uh, get your human design chart off of any human design website that gives you a free chart. 
Uh, let me know what that number is, wherever you can find me on the internet, send me a private message and let me know what that number is. And I will DM you back with a resource to let you know what the archetype is for you to move forward. And you can ask me any questions that you like there. I mean, obviously we're not going to do a full session, but I'd love to interact with you. Please reach out. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you showed up today. I hope you had a ton of fun. Let me know what you learned. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live your life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies Show.